chairing with Deputy O'Sullivan and you're first. So it's five minutes. Five minutes each. Is that yes. agreed? Okay, yep. thank you. Mm -hmm. De Deputy O'Sullivan. Um, I do some more as Gano, but while I'm brief, because a while, I guess Anne is a hurt quick for an unconvention. The region on Uber and Inshid, a Gorga convention, Riven Crinu, Tweed and Crinu, I guess Tereshkak Crinu, Tan Uber are out. And I think a major reason why the convention is moving so well is the the professional, calm and very efficient way in which this, the staff carry out the work. Also the engagement of the citizen members and the engagement of the political leaders contributes to the work under the able chairmanship of Tom Arnold. And the steering group plays a role and I think everyone would acknowledge the balance in the speakers, the presentations and the time allocated for each aspect of the topic to ensure a wide spectrum of views are heard. Um, I do acknowledge the government's response and that there has been a response within three months of each of the, of the conventions. But I think that's just the first step and of course the next step is the follow through. Um, and if the, to give a definite idea of when the referendum is going ahead because I don't think there should be any discussion of a second convention until those issues um, are brought to a satisfactory conclusion. I know you're looking at 2015. I take it that's a vote of confidence that this doyle will be lasting until 2015 at least so we get an opportunity to see that referendum. Referendum. I've absolutely no doubt that the convention discussing the topic of same-sex marriage was the most tense, the most intense and emotive of the conventions that I have attended and I've been at all of them. And in terms of the vote announcing that 79-19 in favour of same-sex marriage, there was a very definite feeling of celebration of the part of those attending, of relief and joy that a right had been granted to gay and lesbian people, a right that they'd been denied for so long, and a right enjoyed by people who are not homosexual. And that basically is what this is about. It's about a human right, it's about equality. And equality shouldn't be based on one's sexual orientation or gender or ethnicity or colour or creed or wealth or social status. And in our own history and in the history of so many countries in the world, we see the war and the bloodshed and the suffering, the eviction the mass migration of people because the systems that they lived under do not recognize and respect the beliefs and the, the, the views of different people. And we can just think of so many places today, Colombia, Democratic Republic of Congo, Central Africa, Syria, where all of this is going on. Now I can understand for some people that same-sex marriage, it's difficult to, extract, to accept because it's different. You know, for thousands of years we've seen two people of the same sex marrying. Um, so it is different and, you know, some people are not very good when it comes to accepting accepting difference. But we have to go back to the principle of equality and there was a very strong vote at the convention and people will have the opportunity to exercise their democratic right in the, the referendum when it comes. I think some years ago, my own naivety and ignorance, I thought that civil partnership had ticked all the boxes. And I was very taken aback to learn otherwise. And it was the work of Marriage Equality Group and Glenn who pointed out the vast number, 169 I think they said, legislative differences between marriage and civil partnerships in the area of parent and child, um, because civil partnerships can't apply to adopt jointly, issues with guardianships, the discrimination faced by children of gay couples, there were issues regarding the family home, for example, it can't be defined as a family home, but a shared home. And the differences then in the legal procedures. And I think the task submission to the convention put it very succinctly that marriage as well as being a social and cultural institution it's also a legal and economic institution and it's up to the state to provide for the civil marriage in the legal and economic senses rather than the wider social and cultural institution of marriage which is in, conducted in accordance with beliefs and cultural traditions of the various religious and ethnic groups. They go on to discuss the tax issues as well which I think are also very interesting and that the most straightforward way of ensuring tax justice is to extend marriage to the same-sex couples. I think civil partnership went a good way on this, but there were still differences. So civil partners and their families have fewer rights and protections than their married counterparts. So basically, civil partnership, while a major advance, falls short of the constant const constitutional equality, and that's what's critical. And civil marriage is a further step to build on the civil partnership legislation. I think it's an actual follow-on. Just before I conclude, I think, you know, we've gone such a long way on rights, equality for lesbian and gay people. And I just want to remember those countries where people, lesbian and gay people, are facing persecution, they're facing torture, and they're facing imprisonment because of their sexual and finally, 
Okay, there are some people who see same-sex marriage as undermining marriage and undermining the value of marriage. But I'd have to say that my experience from the convention, from lesbian and gay friends, from the various organizations, is that what they are, what they are proposing, it's an affirmation of marriage. And certainly it's not undervaluing it at all because they believe in the institution of marriage and they believe in their right to share in that. Thank you very much indeed, Deputy. So, Deputy